Hello, everyone, and welcome to this first webinar dedicated to Ledger, the human-centric venture builder program, which is funded by the European Commission on the Horizon 2020. I am Cassandra Holden, and I will be your host for today's webinar. So if you have audio issues, please dial the number which is on the screen, so plus 33, 97, 10, 72, 67, and 1 with the access code 34, 36, 57, 19, 30. So thank you for your interest in this webinar. I know you are all very excited to know more about Ledger. As you know, this project is a real game changer in decentralized technologies, and we're very happy to give you our details and explain further what the project is all about. So this will be an interactive session. Uh, we will have a number of um, questions to give to you at the end, and we have a Q&A session. So if you can ask anything, you need to send all your questions in the question box. You can find this on the right corner of your screen, where you can send directly all your questions. It's written directly in the, on the toolbar questions. So I am very pleased to welcome our speakers today. We have Andres Sanchez Sandaza who is the Director of Funding Bot Communities and also Project Manager of Ledger. Hello, Andres. Hi, hello, Cassandra. Pleased to be here. It's a pleasure. Uh, we also have Dennis Charmin Roro, <laughs> Technical Officer of Dime.org, who is also deeply involved in the Ledger project. Hello, Charmin. Hello, everyone. Hi, Cassandra. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. And uh, myself, Cassandra Holden, Innovation Developer at Blue Morpho, so a happy partner of the Ledger project as well. So here's a quick overview of who we are in this consortium. Andres, I can let you start. Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, um, can you put the, the slide? And oh, and the funding box. Can you present funding box quickly? Sure. Uh, okay, uh, well, uh, Funding Box is uh, the leader of the project. Uh, we are three partners here, and in Funding Box, we, we are building a community of uh, makers, entrepreneurs, innovators. We are already around 17,000 people in the community. Um, we are growing this up. Um, basically, what we try to do is to help uh, people, projects, organizations to grow. And we do this. Uh, through mostly through offering a funding opportunities as this one and we have in different verticals like robotics circular economy and so on um, yeah uh, that's basically what we do great uh, Jeremy do you want to give a couple words about dine.org sure we are a non-profit foundation. We exist uh, since uh, the 2005 as a foundation in the Netherlands and working with the European Commission on various projects, Decode, Decent, uh, on decentralization technologies, mostly participative democracy and common fare also to actually explore the adoption of complementary currencies for self-determination, constituency and uh, self-management of groups of people. We are looking forward to actually coach uh, new and uh, and uh, uh, propositive uh, uh, projects uh, in the space of free and open source software. We are maintaining an open source uh, operating system, which is DevOne, and many other pieces of software that can be combined, uh, hopefully in a very easy, constructive way to help the project. This is our first time mentoring such a big uh, funding project, and uh, our team uh, uh, is very excited, actually, for it to start. So we are looking forward uh, to know you and uh, also to reply your questions today. Great. Thank you, Jeremy. So uh, through a few words about Blue Morpho, so we are lean innovation doers. So we're working in partnering mode to design and operate ecosystem to accelerate innovation. So we are working in deep tech, digital, and smart system. So what does it mean? Basically, we're working on bankable challenges, and we are identified solutions expected by our key players who are uh, ready to invest in and looking for the right people to solve their expectations. So if the solutions are not ready yet, we are here to help the development of those solutions. 
And what we're doing, we're working with the whole ecosystem, so design, working with the large corporates, private investors, research organizations, startups, SMEs, and institutions to achieve this disruptive innovation. So for the past two years now, we have been conducting specific actions in decentralized technology, so especially in blockchain, but not dedicated to fintech. We will be happy to collaborate with you on this project, where we will be working on the mentoring uh, where if with uh, our community of 16,000 different contacts, which is focused on industrial players and covering 24 different vertical business. So our role in the project will be to provide the different business mentoring and fundraising that uh, you will need in your development. So now I have a first question for you to uh, break the ice. Uh, don't worry, it's a very easy question. It's, did you start your application to the ledger call? So you can answer this on the poll, which will be uh, directly featuring on your screen. Okay, so we can see that the answers are coming in. We'll wait a couple seconds more. Okay, so we have quite uh, heterogeneous results. So this is great. Some of you have already started, some not. So it's uh, the great time to actually start your questions, ask your questions, and learn more about this project to get ready as much as you can. So uh, this gives us a great opportunity to explain Ledger in more details. Andres will give us an overview of the project and the eligibility criteria on how to apply followed by Jérôme, who will explain us the Venture Builder program. And to wrap up, we will have a live Q&A session where you can express all the questions you would like to share. OK. So, now I, I let you. Uh... Yeah, uh, thank you, Cassandra. Uh, so well, what is Ledger? Uh, well, Ledger is a project, uh, as Cassandra said, founded by the European Commission is within the next generation internet program umbrella from the European Commission. Basically, what we are trying to do in, the in this project and within the next generation internet is to, to change how internet is built, to revert the trend and build a new internet where people are at their core. Basically, at Ledger, what we, our mission is to give back to the citizens the control over their data. As you know, this is a bit a hot topic right now. Um, you know, we have all the big corporates retaining data, but we want to give back this uh, control over the data to the citizens. How we are going to do this? We are going to do this through a venture builder for human-centric solutions. So as for claim says, we are about human-centric solutions. We are about finding uh, solutions that empower people. And we believe that currently, maybe, uh, probably, the best way to do this is using decentralized technologies, like blockchain, peer-to-peer, -peer, or distributed layer technology. But we are not restricted to this. We are broader than that. Basically, if you have a solution where you can uh, help uh, to build this new internet, uh, you may find your gap here. So within this concept, um, we are looking for 32 projects. 32 projects to build minimum viable products uh, where privacy by design, openness, and um, citizen data sovereignty are core for them. Um, next slide. Um, so basically, what we are looking is for these 32 projects and what we are offering to them is several things. Maybe the, the most attractive thing for at least from the beginning is the 200,000 euros equity free that this project can gain. And we are going to select this project through two open calls. Uh, as you probably know, the first open call was launched the 1st January. Um, will be open until the 30th April. So you have a bit of time to prepare your proposals, to shape your teams, and to apply here. Um, Yep, next. And here you have a, a summary of the things the program offer because 
We think that equity is maybe the candy to attract you, but we offer much more than that. This is about building MVPs. This is about products. We are not uh, supporting commercialization itself, but we want to help you to enter the program and develop a product that can reach the market in not that long time of period. But for those, for that period, for that uh, venture program, we will be offering you uh, mentoring at technological level, but also at business level. We will be providing you access to investors, PR exposure, and so on. We are a consortium where we have three partners, as you know, and we complement each other really well. In the sense that funding box is really good in community building, in, in running open course, time brings all the technological knowledge and blue board for the possibility to access to investors and to take the project to the market. So uh, this is the value proposition of the project. Um, next slide. And we are going to focus in six verticals. The ones that you are seeing in the screen that are health, economy, mobility, public services, energy and sustainability, and one sixth vertical that is open innovation, quite wide open, just in case you have a project that doesn't fit in the others, you can apply to this. There is uh, a detailed document, uh, what we call the work program, that you can access to it in our website, where you can see much more detailed information about what we are looking for in this uh, verticals. Um, I think this is the, the quick overview of the project. Uh, we'll have time for questions later, but um, yeah, I think the yeah, Cassandra. Okay, so uh, a next live question for our audience. Um, in which of these verticals are you planning to or did you apply into? So as you know, we have health, economy, mobility, public service, energy, and sustainability. Uh, you should have the poll that is on your screen and sharing uh, in direct live mode. So we see the answers coming in. We'll wait a couple seconds. Uh, it's very good. Many people plan to apply in health and public services, which is uh, very interesting to see. So don't hesitate also to ask your questions during the final Q&A. OK. Uh, now let's go on to the technical support with uh, Jérôme. Thanks, Cassandra. Hi again, everyone. Uh, so for uh, our journey together that we envision to be nine months long, uh, really the birth of uh, MVP, we think that uh, uh, it will be most uh, productive to have uh, uh, a lot of contact uh, with the teams. And uh, uh, that's why we call a researcher in residence the role that a mentor from uh, Dynorg, our organization, will take within your team. So what we mean with that is that we expect your team to be able to deliver the technologies that, uh, that uh, you intend to develop into a minimum viable product, uh, but still uh, with the help of uh, an experienced person that can actually uh, guide with suggestions uh, and, and research really on the field on what is the best technological solution uh, that actually can uh, lead us to success in a way that is uh, lean, that is progressive, and that doesn't involve too much uh, uh, work uh, on, on technology, but actually more work on the actual people, on the targets that we want to uh, get. Them. And uh, so this technical mentoring will unfold uh, in uh, uh, four boot camps stages, but it will start first with a welcome event. This will be on the first week of July. Uh, and in this welcoming event, uh, it will be uh, the moment in which we assign the, the mentoring, the mentors, one mentor from Dumorfo and one from Dyne, which will be really this research and residence. Uh, you will also have then an overview of experts and the scenarios of software stacks that we can uh, use after we have studied all the projects that have been awarded, so the beneficiaries. And uh, basically, from there on, we will start having weekly contacts. We will have stand-ups every week, uh, and also the researcher in residence in Dyne 
will actually use uh, uh, everything that is uh, possible to use in terms of knowledge we have in-house to inform you about possibilities. Then we will follow up with other uh, uh, three boot camps. So the, the second boot camp uh, step will be mostly an inception step. It will be very close to the welcome event. You see it on the graph as a star. It will be probably four, six weeks after the welcome event. And uh, that's where we evaluate the roadmap of the teams and we will have an inception. So, so we will try to build requirements out of your ideas and, uh, and the targets really that you envision. Then there will be uh, a lot of uh, work in between, of course, but uh, uh, also it will condense in a third bootcamp, which will be way more focused uh, than the others on a tech sprint, on actually getting things done. It will be more intensive. It will likely be in October this year. And uh, it will also get involved the more experts of each uh, single vertical. We expect to actually spend some, uh, uh, quite some uh, uh, time together during that boot camp. Perhaps it will be split if needed across verticals in order to give enough space uh, to each team. And uh, well, in my own experience, nothing uh, really uh, big was ever done without spending a, a good night together Backing our heads on the problem. So that will be probably that sort of experience. To get out the passion for the projects and trying to get them done, uh, ready for the fourth bootcamp. The fourth one will be more uh, um, sustainability oriented. It will be uh, actually the bootcamp where we evaluate the minimum viable product readiness and we pilot it. So probably will be on the sites that best are affected, best relate to each project. So an on-site experimentation, uh, leaving us a little bit more space to actually adjust the user experience and, uh, uh, and uh, what is being done in, in, in the software and uh, for the participants. And basically, that is also the moment in which Blue Morpho will share their expertise on how to make the project sustainable and eventually bring it to a good uh, business pitch if uh, that is the intention of participants. And I think that's uh, mostly it. I'm looking forward to your questions. OK, so the next step uh, that we're going to present is the business mentoring, so from Blue Morpho. So for the business mentoring, it's important to, it's important to understand that we're not guru-like. We don't believe in guru, actually. The business mentors can't know everything. And it's more importantly, we need to put the team in the right ecosystem to learn from the potential partners, the customer, and the customer feedback. So the way we are working, we are applying the lean innovation model, which is known as the lean startup. So we can challenge you with the ideas on your potential markets and fine tune your project with you and accompany you. By doing so, we're doing that within our community of 16,000 different contacts and the 24 different business verticals so that you're not taking any risk. Uh, you become visible to the market and community only when you wish and when your project is strong enough. Our lean innovation approach uh, leads to two major points. We define and validate with you your business model and check your market visibility. And when you are able to show the market traction and business value, you are ready then ready to collect uh, the relevant financing and presents you to the right investors, business angel, and all private investments. So of course, since we are active uh, for more than two years in decentralized technologies, we have a great network in the field as well. And uh, we can also um, bring you access to specific needs and contacts in terms of key experts in decentralized technologies, blockchain, peer-to-peer, -peer, and others. So if we have to summarize the business mentor uh, we are providing for the venture builder, venture builder project, uh, it would be two words. It would be pragmatic and agile. Our goal is that at the end of the program, you have gained a lot of time in your development phase and also on the deployment to market. So now I will uh, let uh, Andreas lead for the eligibility uh, criteria. So I'll let okay. you take over the hand. Thank you, Cassandra. All right, uh, so let's go to the application process. Uh, well, as you know, this is an easy funded project, so we are quite strict with the requirements, and we try to be as much as transparent as we can. 
uh, that will go through the full process. Uh, you all probably know that to apply uh, through our website, there is a direct link that will drive you to the funding box platform where you need to create a profile and then start the application processes. Uh, but first question, who can apply? Well, in this occasion, this is not just about the uh, organizations, it's about teams. So you don't even need to have an organization set to apply to the project. Uh, so the minimum requirement is either a team of three natural persons, and then you need from those three people, minimum three people has at least someone with some background in academic research, a developer and a business developer or entrepreneur. So basically, you need at least three people with these three roles. Your team can be much bigger, and indeed we encourage to have more developers in the team, as we think that to develop a proper MVP, you will need a stronger uh, effort in, in, in doing code and developing this. Uh, but that is the minimum requirement. You can either be three natural persons or you can apply from an organization or even a consortium of two organizations. But still, we will require that in that organization you have those three profiles. Academic researcher, developer, technical developer, and business development entrepreneur person. You need to be established in the EU uh, or in associated countries. In the case that you have a team of people is, and you are not an organization, what you will be requested is that the people will be placed in Europe along the duration of the Venture Builder program. So you could still be in the USA and apply for this, but you will have to, if you are on one of the awarded uh, projects, you will have to get a compromise and seek, sign a document saying, um, you know, uh, uh, promising that you are going to be in Europe at least for the nine to 12 months that the, pro the program will last. And that is, we are also making quite a lot of emphasis in the gender balance teams. So we encourage that the uh, mixed teams. And indeed, this is even uh, something that we are giving points in the evaluation. So if your thing is not gender balanced, then you won't be able to get the full puntuations in the process. OK, I guess they will have a bit a few questions or maybe uh, one or two questions about this but we leave it for the for the q a so can we okay so what kind of projects are we looking for okay we call them a um, technology transfer experiment that is a bit the terminology from the european commission but basically uh, we want projects that as, as i said before they have some uh, academic uh, not some research components so they have to be, that's why we are asking for a researcher engine team, because we want the, the projects that they go in the line of the state of the art, and that they are relevant to the topic of privacy by design and distributed data governance. As, as I say, this is about, uh, you know, uh, returning the control of citizens over their data, and this is a human-centric venture builder. So we are, we want the projects to have some impact in the citizens. That's crucial for us. And this is about building MVPs, about building products. You may even have a product on, on place and you want to build on, on top of that, that could be feasible, but we are not gonna give you the money just to make marketing or, or anything like that. And of course, uh, within the philosophy of the project is that whatever product you produce has to be compliant with open licenses like open hardware, open software, and creative commons. So the application process, yes. As I say, uh, at Funding Box, uh, we have run many of those projects, and we are quite expert on this. And we are following the methodologies that the European Commission implemented in the projects. So we try to be really transparent, and the process is really open. Uh, so as you know, uh, you may know, uh, there is a, a form that you have to fulfill, as I say, in the funding box platform. 
uh, where you have to some requirements and you have to, to fulfill everything there. There are some supporting documents there that are highly recommendable to read, mostly the guide for applicants. There you will find almost uh, solutions to most of your questions. So that is the key documents, the reference document. You have the FAQ where you have you can find the answer to specific questions. Uh, so we highly recommend you to read them before applying. Uh, when you do the submission, uh, that as I say is the 30th April, the deadline, so it's still a bit of time, but you may need to, to find for someone to complement your team. You may need to find uh, people to have gender balance, so that's why we are also giving a bit of time. Uh, once you submit the, the proposal, then uh, we first will uh, go through the minimum requirements, so if you don't comply with what is minimum, mini, the minimum uh, things that we are asking for, uh, you won't pass through the evaluation, but all those that pass uh, will make a, 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 a what we call a prescoring, and they will go through an external evaluation phase. So I think that is a, a good uh, point to show that uh, this is not something where we are gonna choose, and that it's going to be really transparent and that we are going to have a, external evaluators that has a, no, a clear relation with us or if they have it, they won't be able to evaluate any proposal that is in any way connected to them. So every evaluator will sign uh, a non-conflict of interest uh, paper and we'll keep it this quite uh, straight and clear to avoid any kind of misinterpretation. So when we do that, we, be, we will build a ranking in this first call. As uh, some of you know, we are selecting 16 projects. From the evaluation, we will select 32 that will go to the jury day. The jury day will be a, 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 the final step in the evaluation where you, the selected team will have to go physically to a location that it could be, uh, it will be in Europe, it could be Warsaw, it could be uh, Paris, Amsterdam, is to be decided, but we will try that it will be central. And there they will be pitching and the same day we will be uh, evaluating and selecting the company. So that same day, the companies that will be selected for the venture program will know it. Um, so yes, uh, we'll take 32 companies to the jury day, we'll be selecting 16. I think um, that's it for the moment. Yeah, okay. this is the information. So Cassandra. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Andres. So as a summary, you know that the open call is already open since the 1st of February and will end on the 30th of April. So do not hesitate to apply. You can apply directly at ledgerproject.eu on the Ledger website uh, for the first open call. Uh, now let's pass on to the Q&A session. So please feel free to send your questions in the question box below that you can find on the right side of your screen. So I have a first question. So what is your definition of a researcher and to be part of the team? Does it need to have a PhD, be affiliated to a university? Can it be about informal research published? Uh, Jaromil Andres? Um, yes, uh, all right. You don't need to be a PhD, okay? There is a minimum re uh, requirement that is uh, that you have done at least uh, the basic master to uh, to access to a PhD, but you don't have to have done your thesis. So this is uh, mm, what the, the principle we are using here is based on the Marie Curie's uh, fellowships. Um, basically, uh, that's the minimum requirement that uh, someone in your team has done at least the master to access to a PhD. 
Um, there were more questions in the question, no? I don't know if I have answer or all. Cassandra, I don't... No, I think, it was, I think it was pretty clear. You don't have to be affiliated to a university or PhD. It's uh, more about the research uh, status. Okay. Um, cool. Another question. Could you indicate when the second ledger open call will open? Okay. Uh, that is still undecided. Initially, it was going to be January next year, but it may happen that we uh, make it before, as the European Commission, we are in talk with them, and they suggested to add. It may be in October, but it may be on February. Uh, that is not fully clear right now. But those are the two dates that we are managing. Okay. Uh, we have another question about the entrepreneur status. What do you mean by entrepreneur? In my case, I'm a researcher at University of Milan, but as a founder of a startup, is this considered as entrepreneur? Yes, I think so. But in, I guess in your case, you may need someone else. You cannot occupy the, the two positions, be a researcher and an entrepreneur. Uh, but uh, of course, an entrepreneur or business development guy is someone who is going to take care of the business. What we try with this is that uh, even if that if we intend that the project has an academic component, we want that they also have someone who is a bit business oriented who can help to shape the business model and to try to to take the the product to to the market if if feasible. Thank you for your answer. Uh, we have another question here. We've been developing an idea for a service which is closing a gap between the stakeholders' needs. We have an idea of the technology, of the technology we need, but we don't have a developer in the team. Do we need it, or can we identify the right person in the second phase? Um, well, mostly you need a developer to start with. You need a person that is has some senior position and knows well how to organize the technical work. And then you can also take uh, other people to work with you in a second moment uh, because you have a lot of freedom of how to use this funding. And it can be enough for a bigger team, of course. So that's up to you. But it's important that you put forward in the team of three people an expert, a technical expert that uh, gives an idea also to the jury if, uh, if you are able to actually uh, deliver what, you're, uh, what you are planning. Okay, that's pretty clear. Very clear. Uh, another question. We're a team based in the UK. We have a limited company. What's the situation with the UK at the moment in terms of application criteria? So are, are, are the people in UK eligible to this EU project? They are for the moment, but uh, that is to be what happened really with the Brexit. In any case, uh, I would say that even if you are in the UK, uh, you don't need to be an entity. So you may decide if you apply and finally Brexit happens, uh, you could still be beneficiary if you later move to Europe, to the rest of Europe, eh? to the, what are the, the, the countries in, the, in, in Europe, in the European Union, I want to say, of course. Okay. Um, okay, we have many questions still coming in. Is there a forum where we can find our tech partners if our consortium does not have, does not yet have one? So I guess this question is wondering if we, to find developers uh, to complete their team, if I understand right? Uh, well, the web is full of uh, developers, depending which fora you go to. Uh, we have many at Dyn.org. You can have a look at our mailing lists and our projects that are running. We have communities that span from 100 to 4,000 people of participants. So I invite everyone to start from the free and open source communities 
and then to Dynorg and find your affinity and then team up with people also if distant, uh, that doesn't matter because with this funding, you can also imagine to have relocations uh, managed uh, over the period of development. So I would say uh, stick to the plan, free and open source software and all the fora that uh, you can find online are a big stuff. Okay. Um, we have another question here. Do all people have to work full time on the project? The researcher, developer, and the business developer. Or some of them can work part time. For example, the developer works almost full time, the researcher 20%, and the business developer 40%. Well, there is not a requirement to be full time. Of course, uh, I guess the evaluators. If they see a bigger implication, that will be a positive thing for them to evaluate. Um, we even encourage to have bigger teams than three. That maybe if you have some people part time, you need more more than three people involved. But ideally, we would like to see the three at least three people full time. That's why we are giving this big grant. Uh, it's not compulsory, but it will be quite positively assessed that you are you have at least three, three people full time. Thank you, Andres, for your response. Can you say something about the evaluation criteria for applications? For instance, is it preferable to have a prototype built already? Well, that is uh, not necessary. You can have a proof of uh, concept, you can have a prototype, you can have a generic idea. What you need is some solid, uh, um, solid research that proves that your idea can be developed and will have an impact. An impact that puts human at the center of the equation uh, or nature or environment and not just like for, for the sake of technical advancement. So once you have that, you can also not have an idea of what is the minimum viable product because we will actually walk the walk together and we will narrow it down to, uh, with, uh, with many experts to what we believe will be a great success, which is in uh, the interest of everyone. But don't be shy if you think you have a great idea, a great team that can uh, work on it, but you don't have the time or resources now, uh, put it forward back your claims with as much information and actual data as you can and uh, get there to the journey. Thank you, Jeremy, for your answer. Uh, so I see questions are still coming in, so I suggest maybe we can take five more minutes to answer these questions and the rest will be, be through email. Um, another question that's interesting that come in, we are a community-driven project people all around the world, should the whole team be located in Europe? Um, well, at least the three people with the three profiles should be based in Europe. If then you should contract someone, uh, well, that person can be uh, outside, but at least we need to see that three people, if you are going to apply as a team of individuals, that the core of the team of the the people of the team are based in Europe and place in Europe at least during nine to 12 months of the duration of the program. Thank you, Andres. So another um, question we have. Um, yes, I just one comment uh, I wanted to make as we are seeing that we are having many, many questions. Uh, I want to, well, I think they, in the previous question, they are, were also asking about the evaluation criteria. Uh, you can find that in the guide for applicants in, in our website, in the, when you go to the open call, it's a document there. And I also want to invite uh, to all the people here who still have questions to go to our site and join the community, uh, the legend community, and you can post there your questions there and we will be answering them, and it's a good way that, uh, you know, all the people can access to, to the replies. So we will encourage to go through that route even more than email, so, you know, everything get the shared knowledge. Thank you, Andres. Also, for information, uh, the next webinar will be on March 14th at same time, 1 p.m., so this will be more focused on the tips and advice on how to fill in your application.
So if you have already started or you are planning to, go have a look to be prepared and to have your questions ready. So as you know, we have a whole team who's here and dedicated to you. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send us your questions by email. Uh, we have covered the time. We still have some questions coming, but please send it to us directly and we'll be happy to, to respond. Uh, you can contact us at these information. If you don't have any more suggestions, we can encourage you also to enter into the Ledger team, who's fully here to, to dedicate and respond to all your, your questions or your needs, or if you have very specific information, do not hesitate also to visit our website and to join the community. So thank you for joining this webinar and spending these 45 minutes with us. We really appreciate it. And I would like to thank Andres for his very detailed presentation, and Joao Miro, very precise and professional on handling the ledger processes. But thank you very much for that, and for all thank our- Thank you, Cassandra. Great <laughs> chair. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank president. you, everyone, for attending. It was, yeah. it was useful for everyone. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, for our participants, you can find the recorded version of this webinar online. So you can always go back and access the information you might have missed. The slides will also be available and sent to you. So team uh, is looking forward to support you in the Ledger project and good luck on your application. <laughs>